have a place, a compound. We have a community. It's safe here. How many of you are there? Are any of them children? Because the fastest way to get here is by the river, and I don't think you could make it with kids. Hello everyone, short movie here. Today I'm going to tell you about the film Bird Box. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Artist Mallory Hayes, who is pregnant, is visited by her sister Jessica. The TV is broadcasting a news report about unexplained mass suicides that started in Siberia and are now spreading across Europe. Jess notices Mallory's picture which she says symbolizes a lack of connection. But Jess tells her that this will not be the case with the baby. The sister then offers to drop Mallory off at the doctor's office. At Dr. Lapham's appointment, Mallory and Jess joke about alcohol during pregnancy. Lapham doesn't find their comments funny and offers Mallory an alternative, letting someone adopt her baby if she feels she's not ready for that responsibility. On her way out of the office, Mallory notices the woman they passed by earlier. She is behaving strangely, and Mallory hurries to leave quickly. Thus, they realize that the news is not lying, and the disease, which has struck Europe and Siberia, has now spread to America. They run out into the street just as utter chaos begins to unfold around them. People are smashing their cars. Jess gets behind the wheel and drives her sister for a while until her eyes take on a strange color and the girl herself seems more frightened than anything only she can see. She desperately keeps driving. Mallory tries to keep her on her feet, but the car flips onto the roof. They survive, but Jess is still in a trance and Mallory can only watch as her sister stands up and blocks the path of the rushing truck. Confused, Mallory runs with everyone else and falls over. A woman named Lydia runs out of the house to help Mallory, even though her husband Douglas resists the act of goodwill, worrying for their safety. Before Lydia can help Mallory up, her mind begins to blur as her mother's voice urges her to climb into the burning car, which explodes moments later. A man named Tom helps Mallory up and they run into the house together. They are followed by a policeman called Lucy. Also there is Greg, the owner of the house, Charlie, Felix, Cheryl and a couple, Jason and Samantha. The latter two are leaving the house when they hear their son say on the phone that he is in danger. The rest of the tenants share information with each other about this mysterious force that is causing the madness going on. Charlie makes the assumption that the entity is caused by demons that take the form of deepest sadness or greatest loss. Everyone agrees that the entity is invisible, but by opening your eyes to it, you let it in and can commit suicide. Mallory walks away from the group. Tom follows her to comfort her. She tells him what happened to Jess. The group then closes the doors and covers the windows with newspaper so they can't look. Outside, a survivor named Olympia knocks and begs to be let into the house. Douglas tries to prevent the company from opening the doors, and Mallory grabs a rifle and stands at the ready just in case. Olympia is cautiously led into the house. It is discovered that she too is pregnant. Greg then suggests watching what is going on outside. Using the surveillance cameras placed on the front of the house, he sits down in front of the monitor, expecting to see something and at some point something shows up on the screen. He is helped to tie his hands to a chair so that he doesn't hurt himself and they go downstairs. After a moment they hear a knocking sound coming from the room upstairs. They rush to the noise, and when they open, the door they watch as Greg topples over in his chair and smashes his head on the edge of the table to death. 
The others smashed their computer monitor to smithereens. Later that night, Olympia is alone with Mallory and wonders what she would name her baby. But Mallory is disinclined to socialize and just wants to be left alone. As she walks down the corridor to the bathroom, Mallory hears some noise but discovers that it is just Lucy and Felix having fun. The group runs out of food and they realize that help is not coming. Mallory, Tom, Douglas, Lucy and Charlie get together to go to the supermarket where Charlie used to work before things go wrong. They paint over the car windows and use the GPS to drive blind on the road. They sense they are driving over bodies but try to ignore it. The GPS then begins to warn of the possibility of a collision from all sides. A mysterious entity surrounds them. However, Tom still manages to drive them away from the evil. They disembark at a shop where they pick up as much food as they can carry. Mallory sees the birds, which she decides to take with her as pets. Suddenly, they hear the voice of a former colleague of Charlie's locked in the freezer. He begs to be let out. When the group opens the door, he begins to talk about how beautiful the entity is. That it needs to be seen. He loses his temper while Lucy, Tom, and Douglas try to restrain him. Charlie looks into his colleague's eyes, sees the essence, and realizing he is already doomed, lunges at the aggressor. They both end up trapped in a freezer. Charlie sacrifices himself allowing the others to return home. That same night, Mallory and Douglas have a brief conversation about personal matters and worries. Suddenly, the characters hear the sound of a car engine. They run to the garage and find that it is gone. Olympia, without consulting her company, lets a desperate man named Gary into the house. The rest of the residents are on edge, scrutinizing and questioning Gary suspiciously. He tells them that escaped mental hospital patients have turned up for him and his friend, trying to force them both to look at the creatures. Gary's friend attacked one of the patients, giving his comrade the opportunity to slip away. He goes on to say that many outside do not wear a blindfold, eagerly looking at the creatures and eager for others to see them in the same way. Douglas doesn't trust Gary and tries to lead him out of the house at gunpoint, but Cheryl knocks him out and allows the intruder to stay. Douglas, on the other hand, they lock him in the garage. Olympia tearfully apologizes for letting Gary in and says she feels a burden. But Mallory reassures and convinces her otherwise. Olympia then asks Mallory to take care of her baby in case something happens to her. And Mallory agrees. In return, she gives Olympia a Hello Kitty toy for her baby. Mallory and Olympia go into labor at the same time. While Tom and Cheryl help the girls, Gary pulls a bunch of creature drawings out of his suitcase and starts laying them out on the table. It becomes clear that he is one of the crazy people who has seen these entities and wants others to see them. He then takes Mallory's birdcage and puts it in the refrigerator. Afterwards, he tears the paper off the windows. Douglas is watching through the glass in the door. He tries to inform Tom, who is passing by, but Gary gets to him as well knocking him out with a blow to the back of the head. Gary also opens the garage door to try and get rid of Douglas. Meanwhile, Olympia gives birth to a girl and Mallory gives birth to a boy. Gary enters the room and raises the blinds in front of Olympia. Mallory begs Olympia to give the baby away before the inevitable happens. Moments before she jumps out the window, Gary then forces Cheryl to look outside opens her eyes and lets the evil in. Cheryl kills herself with the scissors she used to cut her umbilical cords just moments ago. Douglas enters with a shotgun but can't shoot as he has to close his eyes and the fear of hurting Mallory and the children stops him. Nevertheless, he manages to hit Gary in the arm but that doesn't save him from multiple stabs with scissors and an early death. Awaking Tom sees the shotgun and tries to grab it, with Gary on the other side reaching for it. Shots are heard and Mallory hides under a blanket. The survivor Tom comes upstairs to join her.
five years later, Mallory and Tom are living together, raising two children. From time to time, they watch some people outside driving around in cars without blindfolds and with the windows open. At night, the family receives a radio message from a man called Rick, who assures them they are in a safe place with plenty of supplies and food. He instructs them on how to get to the compound. The quickest way is to raft down the river, but going there with the children is certain death, as the path is dangerous and they have to swim blindfolded. To find their hiding place, Rick suggests they follow the birds' voices. Tom thinks it's necessary to get into the compound, but Mallory fears it could be a trap. Outside, there's the noise of cars again. Old guests have invaded but this time they plan to smoke the family out of the house. Tom goes down to confront them, while Mallory and the children escape safely out the back door. The survivors tell Tom to take the blindfold off. When they spot Mallory and the children, Tom opens fire and eliminates the three marauders. On the first attempt, Tom then removes the blindfold and kills two more before rushing off in pursuit of the leader who is chasing his wife. The entity begins to affect Tom, but he fights back with enough time, which is just enough for him to take down the leader. Eventually, he points the gun at himself, letting Mallory know that Tom is gone. Mallory gathers up the children and puts them in a boat to go out into the river. While floating down the river, Mallory hears a voice calling out that it is safe to remove the headband. But Mallory forbids the children to do so. The man claims he has food and that he has seen the creature and there is no reason to be afraid of it. Mallory pulls out a gun and fires blindly, after which the man attacks her and tries to pull the blindfold off her eyes. Mallory fights him and kills him with a machete. After being on the river for a long time, Mallory stops paddling, wanting a break. When she picks up again, the boat collides with a sunken truck and boy falls out of the boat, but Mallory pulls him out and tries to warm him up. Unfortunately, the food and blankets are washed away by the current, so she does the best she can. Once ashore, she leaves the children in the boat and heads into the woods in search of food. She enters a building where she hears a noise and sees objects moving on their own under the influence of a mysterious entity. Mallory manages to get out of the building, but the entity pursues her, continuing to whisper her name. Mallory fires the gun at her head. Girl hears the gunshots and leaves the boat to help Mallory, but the latter manages to intercept her at the boat itself after which girl is punished for disobedience as there was an instruction not to get out of the boat under any circumstances after another 48 hours on the river the boat swiftly approaches the rapids they reach the choppy waters that mallory has to navigate unfortunately the risk and effort are not worth it the boat capsizes and all the passengers find themselves in the water. Mallory shouts to the children and soon finds the boy in the water while the girl has climbed a little further and is waiting on dry land. The three survivors walk through the woods where the entity whispers to them and uses all her power to convince them to open their eyes and look. But Mallory's resistance proves stronger and she forces the children to listen to her instead of the entity. They follow the voices of the birds until they finally reach the compound. The entity surrounds them as they try to go inside until the door swings open and the family is on the other side. The settlers check the eyes of Mallory and the children before accepting them. Next they meet Rick and Mallory discovers that the compound is a school for the blind and the people in it are protected from the entities. Mallory and the children then discover Dr. Lapham who cheerfully greets them. Mallory proudly announces that they are her children and she is their mother. The mother then opens the bird box and frees the animals to join with the other birds in the sanctuary. 